Дорогие друзья, я хочу вам представить нашего гостя, это выдающийся человек, господин Хироси Камияма, президент Института исследований Митсубиси и почетный президент Токийского университета. Человек в Японии и в мире очень известный, известный и как ученый, и как руководитель образования, и как консультант крупнейших корпораций, как деятель образования, имеет многочисленные награды японские общество инженеров, химиков, и вообще специалист в области химического машиностроения, глобального природного машиностроения и структурирования знаний. Господин Камияма сегодня в Японии один из самых крупных мыслителей, к мнению которого прислушивается и общество, и власти. И господин Камияма принимал участие в Ярославском форуме где он выступал в пленарном заседании и в секциях, и дал любезное согласие побывать у нас в университете и выступить перед студентами и представителями преподавателей. Так что я с удовольствием вас приветствую, господин Камьян, и передаю вам слово. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, introduction. Uh, I was in Yaroslavri yesterday, and uh, as he mentioned, the, we discussed about the future of the humankind. And the, I believe you are leaders of the next age of Russia, but not only for Russia. You will be the leaders of humankind. That is inevitable because the earth is globalized. You are not only Russia. So today I would like to talk about long perspective. My long perspective means 2050. And of course we can think of 10 centuries from now. <laughs> But I, my uh, long term means 2050. And my, of course, my thinking can extend to the space, but it's too much to me. I will focus on the Earth. And so my long term perspective is 2050, and my ge geological perspective is the Earth. But we need action now because we have many difficulties in the earth. And I am on how I can use my uh, PowerPoint. I am on my background is engineering. It's rather far from me. But the, without humanity, science and technology cannot work. But without science and technology, humanity or diplomacy or economy cannot work. So you, next generation leaders, have to run both humanity and science and technology. So I will talk. I, I don't use the, some jargon uh, in this talk. I will only use very fundamental concepts. But the fundamental concepts is very important. I will talk about green and silver innovations. Can you imagine green innovation? Of course you can. You can. It's related to environment, natural resources, and so on. What is silver innovations? You imagine. <laughs> it's an aging society. The aging society is a very urgent issue, not only developed countries, but also 
in developing countries. For example, civil society. On this. <laughs> <laughs> For example, consider young China. In China, working age population that is from 15 years old to 64 years old will start to decrease very early, as early as 2015, only four years from now. This is a very simple indication of aging. Even young China will become aging society soon. This means all the human beings have to combat this issue. Long life, aging society is not bad. We can live long, that means. But we have to, the aging society, vivid. That is the challenge of human beings. And so I'm strongly advocating this green and silver innovations to the government of Japan. And I'm talking to all over the world. This is one of the chances. This is the innovation models uh, in Japan. Innovation is differently defined. Maybe a hundred uh, definitions exist. Maybe first person who used it is Schumpeter, uh, an economist. But the, my definition is innovation is change, big change, fundamental change in society. Very frequently, innovation is driven by technology innovation. But very often, dissemination of knowledge can drive innovation. Or even strong leadership of the society can lead innovation. So, Innovation driving force are miscellaneous. In Japan, we closed to our country to outside until 1868. For 20, 250 years. During this time, Japanese culture became very developed. We have very good paintings very good literature, and so on. But our industry to prepare materials, steel or uh, uh, weapons, uh, were not developed at all. So we, when we opened uh, our, we, we, when we were forced to open our country to outside, we were in danger. We, so we tried to catch up with the technology of Western world. So now, probably in 19, 1968, just 100 years from the Meiji Restoration, when we opened our country to outside, our GDP, Japanese GDP, became the second uh, biggest in the world. At that time, we were a developed country. But after that, we are rather stagnant. Japan is stagnant. Very small rate of growth rate of economy and people's mindset have not changed, still catching up with techno mindset. This is the very fundamental or basic uh, difficulty we are facing. We mean Japanese, Japanese are facing now. But anyway, I have been proposing innovations again. So this is the third innovation into Japan. But now, the world is globalized. We discussed diversity in the Yaroslav Forum yesterday. Diversity was the major theme. But consider, 
diversity existed even thousand years ago. Japan and Russia were different. This is diversity. Diversity existed. Then why we discuss diversity now? Because globalization made the conflict or mixing or some touch between diversities. That is why we need to discuss diversity now. So you have to consider the humanity or what is the paradigm of the 21st century which are different from the 20th century's paradigm. I believe this is my idea. One is shrinking earth. Second is aging society. And third, exploding knowledge. We have probably 10,000 times knowledge compared to the 100 years ago. That is the example of photosynthesis. Left side, left side figure is the means on the chlorophyll, oxygen and carbon hydrate are produced from CO2 and H2O by driven by solar energy. Of course, all of you understand this. This was the whole knowledge of 1900. A whole knowledge on photosynthesis. But right hand side, you cannot see the details. I chose those figures. No one understands the whole. No one, even the specialist in this field, doesn't understand the whole of photosynthesis. This is the present status in all the academic fields. This is a very important thing. We have to communicate. We have to reach consensus. But it's very difficult. This is a real challenge. So three important paradigms which are different from 20th century. We have to challenge. You new leaders have to challenge. I am doing that. I am doing that. But of course, I will not finish. You have to. It's your burden, I think. And the, I think the, I'm the engineer uh, from uh, the field of chemical engineer. Uh, energy, materials, uh, those are my specialty. Uh, from the viewpoints of materials and energy on the earth, 2050, year, to year 2050, will be very crucial for humanity. Depletion of natural resources or uh, grow, global warming of the earth. In every sense, 2050 will be very crucial for humanity from the viewpoints of materials and the energy and of the earth. And Considering a time for change, 2050 will come soon, very soon. Only 39 years old from now, 39 years. 39 years, before 39 years, I was a PhD student. It's not so long. <laughs> Only 39 years, 2050 will come. That is the reason why innovations, we have to be in hurry. This is new innovation model in Japan. By the way, how long can I talk? Up to you. <laughs> English. When I speak English, I need focus, <laughs> concentration, and so I, I'm tired. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can. Mm. Okay. Okay, I will uh, skip the uh, 
to, to achieve green innovation, uh, I proposed uh, Vision 2050. Uh, I will uh, present uh, my book, uh, English version, to these two people. Yeah. Yeah. And you can download from Springer, free. And so you can read it. Uh, the basic, most important conclusion of my MOOC, book is three points is important. Yeah. One is improve energy efficiency by three times. This is the most important. The second is double the use of renewable energy. Now the 20% of energy is provided by non-fossil fuel. 80% of energy is supplied by fossil fuel. 20%, 10% of which is biomass. And 5% hydraulic. And 5% nuclear. This is the major energy sources of the humankind now. Where windmills, where solar panel, they are much less than 1%. So statistically, fossil 80%, biomass 10%, hydraulic 5%, nuclear 5%. You know the Fukushima issue. We made a big mistake in Japan in nuclear reactor. But so we are seriously thinking the next, uh, next energy source. Most important energy source is energy efficiency. Remember it deeply to your heart. Most important is energy efficiency. Maybe I have time to talk about my own house. My own, in my own house, I reduced my energy consumption by 81%. Nine years ago, I replaced my house by new one. Then I concentrated the existing Best technology. 81%? My energy consumption became 19% by 81% reduction. Using solar batteries? Or? Solar battery, so, very good question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I am, I'm an it's engineer. It's very important for all of us. <laughs> I am, I'm an engineer. So I accumulated the data for nine years. So this is the fact. 81% reduction of energy is composed of 58% of energy efficiency improvement. My house is better insulated. So heat for air conditioning. Mm -hmm. decreased three times, one, one third. Mm -hmm. And I replaced my 13-year-old refrigerator to a new one. <laughs> then the energy consumption became one third. So 84% energy was reduced by better efficiency. And this is the uh, answer to you. 23% of energy is supplied by my solar panel. So in total, 81% reduction. This is real. And my life in my new house is much better than before. Much better, much comfortable. So better life. And the very in uh, interestingly, my Initial investment for energy efficiency and solar panel can be recovered within 12 years. Nine years has already passed. Please invite me three years from now again. <laughs> I will report I have already recovered my initial investment. 
please invite me again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, agree. So, 81% energy reduction and 12 years recovery of investment and better life. How is it impressive to every country? The most important is the United States. They lose energy. They don't put off the switch of air conditioner when they take a trip for two months. <laughs> Stop such kind of crazy thing. And as, as important as the United States, China. These two countries emit 60% of CO2 in China. To China, China produce 55% of cement last year. 55% mm -hmm. of cement was produced in China last year. But they compared to the efficiency of Japanese cement technology, they consume 1.7 times more energy. How much we can decrease the energy consumption? And, cons okay. <laughs> okay, I, I should skip to next. <laughs> the most important in energy, energy issue is efficiency. This is the theoretical plot, theoretical plot of energy consumption of a car. Horizontal is vehicle weight, and the uh, vertical is energy consumption. How much a liter per kilometer? Liter per kilometer. Then if the technology is the same, this makes a straight line passing through an origin. This is the most beautiful theory. And why it makes a straight line? A car consumes energy against friction. You understand it, very simple. F where friction exists in a car, it's almost between tires and the earth. This is proportional. This friction is proportional to the weight of a car. And so, if the technology from combustion of gasoline to tires, then it makes a straight line passing through an origin. It's real. Red circles. European cars and American cars, Volkswagen, GM, General Motors, and so on, makes a straight line. And brutes are Japanese cars, Honda, Toyota, Nissan, and so on. I put all the data from catalog, no choice. Then Japanese car consumes 20% less energy than European and American cars. Why? The technology better in Japanese car. Very simple. Technology of combustion of gasoline to tires are better. How much? 20% better in Japanese cars. So please buy Japanese cars. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it, it's for humanity, not for Japan. It, it's for humanity. Okay. And <laughs> next is hybrid cars. Hybrid car consumes half, even half of the normal Japanese cars. So it's very easy to reduce energy consumption. And next is the dots are electric electricity driven on the fuel cells driven cars. It consumes half, rather half. Consider 2050, year 2050. How do you imagine about year 2050? I imagine all the people, all the nations in the world will become developed. Isn't it? Fantastic. Hmm? Fantastic, but I think it's real. Of course, some countries, I don't know where, may 
remain developing. Maybe it may be North Korea if she continues the present status. But most of the countries, of course Russia, India, China, Brazil, these are called BRICS countries, they will become developed within 20 years. We have 39 years until 2050. So, best assumption, most realistic assumption of 2050, all the humanity become developed. Then, how many cars are owned? It's very simple, four billion. Now, nine billion people, nine billion, nine billion, nine billion people will live at 2050. Now, uh, 6.7 billion. Seven. Seven billion. October seven. Oh, is that right? Seven billion now. Changing very quickly. And nine billion. In developed countries, we have one car per two persons. Even in Russia, cross. In Japan, the 45 cars per 100 persons. The number is constant. If all the nations will become developed, 4.5 billion cars will be possessed by the people. It is four times the present. Consider, it is four times the present. Consider one car consumes one-fifth to one-tenth because all the cars will become electricity-driven and fuel cell-driven. Then. The total consumption of energy will become 40 to 80 percent for transportation, because one car consumes one fifth or one tenth the energy, and the number of cars will, will become four times, multiply four times multiply one fifth or one tenth. Total energy consumption for transportation will become 40 to 80 percent. It will decrease instead of increase. This is the importance of technology. Technology, and in the case of energy, energy efficiency is the most important. Remember it. This is the most important thing. So, uh, this is the cement case, cemento. Uh, this uh, graph was presented to me by Cement Association. I added only the blue theoretical value. The abscissa is a energy consumption per ton of cemento. Do you understand me? The abscissa is consumption of energy to produce cemento of one ton. So this is the data for Japan from 1960 to 1990. We developed new cement processes from wet process to dry process, and the new, sus new uh, suspension preheater, it's an economizer for better efficiency, is equipped. And now the new suspension preheater, much better suspension preheater for heat recovery was equipped in the newest. So, we could decrease the energy consumption only half compared to 1960s. But look at the top, uh, top right, uh, one word missing, just U. What is U? It's U.S., <laughs> United States. United States is not so eager for better efficiency because energy cost is low. It's much cheaper. It was cheaper by three times compared to Japan or Europe. So they don't have any incentive to reduce energy cost. It's bad for human being. If, but the China, United States consume 1.6 times the energy consumption, one point energy, energy consumption compared to Japan. And I said before, China consumes 
it was than Japan. But why? This is the data. This is the data. But you should think, why Japanese cement product manufacturers invested for a better efficiency? Is it ethically good for a human being, the Japanese manufacturers? Unfortunately, I don't think so. They did for economy. It was made on the free market. The investment was recovered by the decrease of energy cost. That is the reason why Japanese cement manufacturers invested. So if the energy price is universal or international level, China should invest on better efficiency, scrap the old plants, build new ones. If they consider five-year recovery or seven-year recovery of the investment cost, then it will economically feasible. This is the hope. I mentioned about I invested my house and the investment cost will be recovered within 12 years. Here, better efficiency for energy saving efficiency investment will be recovered probably seven years. So investment for better efficiency can, can be recovered from this case of cemento to my own house. From small thing to large things, the largest is the power generation. Now the all over the world, efficiency of electricity generation from fossil fuel depends from 60% to 25%. Lowest plants produce the electricity 25% of the heat value of fossil fuel. But the best one produced 60%. Invest, scrap the old ones, and build new ones. We need money for that. But all over the world, we have much more money than we need. This is true. That is why Riemann shock happened. That is why the instability of the economy continues to occur. We have much more money than required. It's not my own case. <laughs> but in worldwide, we have much more money than required. I don't know who owns it. <laughs> Maybe banks or investors and so on. So if humanity is clever for investing 10 years recovery target, then almost all the energy issue will be solved. Please remember, this is true from the viewpoint of technology and viewpoint of science, and even from the viewpoint of economy, <laughs> because it was done. It was done by myself for my house. But do not wish to 30% return or 40% annual return. It's a crime to humanity. It's a crime, 30%, 40%. It Exploitation. 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 But anyway, this is what I want to say. Okay. Every energy efficiency improvement by three times is feasible. This is my conclusion. This is my conclusion. I surveyed all the important items to consume energy from power production, uh, automobile, and plastics, cement production, steel, and so on. I surveyed all the important items, 
and in average, three times the energy efficiency improvement is possible. This is the hope of the human being for a global warming control and energy depletion issue. The 1990, I, I proposed this model in 1990. Uh, it's not so big difference between 1990 and 2010. Uh, now 80% of energy is supplied by fossil. And white part, 20% uh, is non-fossil. And if my assumption that 9 billion people will live in 2050 and uh, all the people will enjoy the life enjoyed by presently developed countries, then three times more energy is required. This is, this is catastrophic scenario. But the C, Vision 2050, we can provide three times services at the cost of the same energy consumption level as present, because three times energy efficiency will be made at 2050. I think this is the solution. This means all the, all the developing countries can be developed until 2050. And if we can meet 2050 in this shape, 20, year 20, uh, look at the top sentence. Year 2050 will be, oh, not a crucial, will be bright with respect to materials and energy. I don't know about terrorism or religion. It's not my uh, theme, you are, you are theme. But the, from the viewpoint of energy and materials, 2050 will be bright. You have hope. That is important. You have hope. And after 2050, you will enjoy 22nd century. Do you intend to live at... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Very honestly speaking, I wish to watch 2050. Yes. I will be 105. It's difficult, but the, I don't think it's impossible. So, you can try 22nd century. Only 120. 120 is the lifetime of a cell from the present understanding of biology. So, it's possible. And the 22nd century energy source, I'm sure, will be renewable. The most important is solar. Consider solar energy comes 10,000 times bigger than this rate, this consumption rate, 10,000 times bigger. So use one 10,000. Then we can enjoy the present life. Three times, three 10,000 thus. Then you can enjoy three times more energy than present. It's easy. So you have hope. OK, I will skip. I will skip. Uh, this is the e energy consumption in houses. I would like to know how much energy is consumed in where? in Russia. If you have some, please present to me. In Japan, in a normal house, water heating consumes 30% of the energy, and air conditioning 28%, uh, including warming, of course, and uh, lighting 10%, and uh, others. Uh, uh, refrigerator occupies the m biggest part of others. And so, uh, water heating, air conditioning, lighting, and refrigerator, these are the major sources of energy consumption. So, Russia is a cold country. Use three layered glasses for window. In Japan, it's a warm country, and so we should use 
ダブルレイヤードウィンドウ。グラスキャノットインシュレイトヒート。It blocks wind, but heat can penetrate through the grass. So you need to use pair, pair, gra- pair of grasses. Then the、uh, air between the two grasses insulate the heat. You are very stupid. Very stupid. Why you input heat to your room? Maybe you will think it's cold. But your room is 25 degrees in centigrade. Why you, do you continue to supply heat? Very simple. Heat emits to outside. Consider a Dewar bottle. Do you know Dewar bottle? Or、oh, it's a. What do you know? Thermos. 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 If the house is thermos, you don't need to supply heat anymore. So, all the energy source to warm your room is a crime to human beings. But we have the central heating system, <laughs> not air conditioning. <laughs> Same thing. Okay, next is、uh, what kind of writing is it? Oh, it's not so bad.、Uh, yeah, 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 it, it's, it's good enough. But some bulb, Hakunet's t o t e n a we should eliminate this, replace it. Ну, сука, как раз есть даже президент на этот счет. Да, это время с уйхо с ним, да. Чего с ним, да. А, это очень хорошо. Да, да. Да, да. Энерджи эффициенции. Энерджи эффициенции. Энерджи эффициенции. Это самое важное. Люди любят поговорить о панелях солнечных панелей. Но это самое важное. Энерджи эффициенции. Я был адвокатом в Японии 30 лет. Но они любят панелях. Solar panel. I like solar panel. I'm a researcher in solar battery、uh, <laughs> for 20 years, and so I like it. But the energy efficiency is more, more important quantitatively. Quantitatively more important. Please understand it. This is a very important message. And this is the technology、uh, innovation. I, I, I will skip. This is another innovation for a water heater. Water heater energy can, be, can become zero. It's very interesting to note. Recently, fewer cells started to be in market in Japan. It's improved to 45% electricity production rate now. It produces 40% of electricity from gas or oil. And 50% hot water is produced simultaneously. Consider the power generation to burn fossil fuel. This produces 40% in average. So, this fuel cell has already. Same as concentrated power supplier. So, the 50% of hot water we can get free. So, the very large source of energy consumption can be zero. This is a very important message. So, I did. I have published a paper, I have published a book. It's quite a good seller, but still it's, impo- it's not enough. People do not do that. So I made action. Action is important. Action is important. You are leaders, you lead the society. So action, you have to take action. My action is Komiyama Echo House. I spoke this everywhere, including Yarosu Vrari yesterday. <laughs> This is Komiyama Echo House. That, is, that has already been 
talked because he asked me. <laughs> This is 81% energy reduction. Hmm? You are using the uh, hybrid car, heat pump, water heater, high insulation, new type of air conditioners, and new refrigerators, and LED, light emission diode type illuminations, lighting, and solar power uh, generation of 3.6 kilowatt, and 81% energy reduction, and 12 years investment recovery. This is my heart, and better life. And challenge, okay, I, I will skip. So, I again say, 2050 will come soon. 2050, everyone understand global warming is very severe to all the humankind. I'm, I have been believing, I have been believing for 30 years for the threat of global warming. At 2050, no one doubts. At 2050, no one doubts the threat of global warming. Six billion people must take actions. We need structuring of actions. This is rather, can you imagine? Action one is Komiyama Eco House. But Komiyama Eco House is not suited for Russian climate. So we decompose Komiyama Eco House into factors of heat pump water heater, insulation, solar battery, and so on. So that we can reuse the former person's actions. This is the basic structure of knowledge. Knowledge is different from information or data. When data is structured or information is structured so that others can use, reuse it, it becomes knowledge. This is that way of efforts which are being made by my colleagues. So again, paradigm, one is shrinking earth. Of course, earth is a constant volume. But the one century ago, not so frequent frauds of materials, people, and money or information happen. <laughs> but now it's instantaneous due to internet system and aircraft and trains and so on. It can be good for human being but it can destroy our civilizations. So this is not good or bad. This is a paradigm of the 21st century, shrinking us, consider epidemic. Very often, tree influenza, bird, bird influenza. Bird influenza, influenza happens, why? It happens more frequently than ever. Why? Due to the increase of density. We have more people. We have more pigs. We have more cows. We have more birds. So, collision frequency, it's proportional to the second order of the density. So, density or probability of happening of such collision makes epidemic a threat of the 21st century. So shrinking us, not only natural resources issue or energy issue, but also very many things, including diversity issues, are the consequences of shrinking us. 
and aging society. I, uh, I will not elaborate. Uh, and your readers, when, even when I was a student, I felt how much I have to study. Teachers, professors, rushes knowledge <laughs> into my head. Of course, study I like, but I like football when I was young as a student. And I like, I love some female person. <laughs> I need time. So do they. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I felt how much I have to run. This is the challenge you are facing. Best thing is deep rethinking. And you have to try, structure your brain. What is the structure of our knowledge? That is very basic importance, I believe. So, I'm advocating innovation. Yesterday, a Polish former president mentioned about the unemployment of young people. Yeah. This is historical trend, very important, very basic. We have to solve this issue. This is the issue. For that purposes, I this is my answer, my proposal of my answer, solution. Stru green growth, we need innovation, new industry, new jobs. Green industry, green growth will provide us with opportunities of new jobs. And uh, so, as in silver innovation, we need a lot of materials a lot of services, different society, different buildings. Around aging society, we have a lot of chance of new jobs and golden innovation. This is the result of knowledge field. Probably education is a very important issue. Now we think education means teach pupils or teach young. But this is the 20th century paradigm because we need labor. When 15 years to 64 years old people worked for producing food, televisions, so kind of material. But it doesn't need so much labor now because we have machines. So we have less jobs. We need new jobs. Education field is a source because now the retirement age is 60 in Japan, becoming 65. Or, or when we die at the age of 65 or 70. That's okay. But we will live until 90s. In my case, 105. <laughs> it's too long without any working. So we need lifelong learning society. This is the real reason of lifelong learning. I believe. So these are not only the possibility of new jobs for new paradigm of the 21st century. You should think, what is the opportunity? What do you want to have? This is the real question. What do we, do I want? What society? What system? This is this basic question is our challenge. That is my 
uh, this is 1967 Sumida River, which flows downtown Tokyo. When I graduated from the university, so 44 years ago, it's long ago. It is a present Sumida River. Pollution was solved in Japan. 1967, we experienced a very rapid growth rate of economy. Every uh, eight, eight percent uh, in average, eight percent per year, high growth rate at 1960s. And we polluted our environment. But importantly, we could recover. Please visit us. Please visit us. You can enjoy Japanese tempura and sashimi with warm sake <laughs> on a very beautiful river downtown Tokyo. Please visit us. This is, it, it happened everywhere of Japan. The left side is 1950s, Yokkaichi, very famous industrial place. And the right side is the present. It happened all around Japan. This is 1960s, Kita Kyushu, uh, also uh, very highly industrialized area. Right side is present. You can trust me, this is the same place. Then you can more trust me. You, you, you can look, look, look. At <laughs> same place. This strange shaped bay, left side in the 1960s, right side present. We can swim now. In 1960s, we surprised to know the news. Screw of a ship, Melton, due to the acidity. This bay was polluted such that. But now we can swim. So we polluted, but we damaged. Why? How, how did Japan do it? This is the answer. The top is, this is how much sulfur and nitrogen are emitted from one kilowatt, one kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour is the unit of electricity. One kilowatt hour production from uh, fossil burnt uh, generation. Top is United States, second is United Kingdom, Germany, France, Italy, uh, Canada, uh, China. I looked for the data of Russia, but I couldn't, uh, but please uh, present me with. Bottom is Japan. Why so small? I surveyed the desulfurization plant. Desulfurization means uh, wash the uh, effluent gas from furnace by some chemicals. It's it called desulfurization plant. In at early 1990s, 4,000 desulfurization plants were working in the world. And as many as 3,200 plants were working in Japan. 80% of desulfurization plants were working in Japan. Where? only 5% of energy is consumed. That is the result. So we could solve environmental deterioration. So we can, we can solve, even if these things happen. This is a hope. Now we can imagine similar situation in some developing countries, including China. We can solve humanity. So I think this is the last. My conclusion reads, leaders of the next generation, 2050 will come soon. It's a very crucial time for humankind. And globalized economy is opaque heterogeneous and short-sighted. 
30% profit or 40% return is very short-sighted. You shouldn't do so. If we fail to manage it, the hard-to-control system, this is the present earth, the hard-to-control system will explode. We need to keep that in mind for innovation. Innovation we require. That is my message. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Kamiyama san, for your very thoughtful, very sophisticated, and very innovative presentation. And uh, I, I understand that we don't have much time, but we have time for a few questions from the audience, if, if you have questions. Yes, sure. Um, my name is Liam, I'm a four-year student of uh, International Relations Department. And as you said before, this problem of innovation is a problem of mankind, of the whole world. But uh, there's also a problem of the in exchange of information, exchange of knowledge. Especially the newest technologies are always kept secret. So uh, how do you think can we solve this problem? Secret what? Yes, the secret. For example, uh, some technologies that are used in... Some Japan, new technologies. Huh? Or in the US National are secrets. not... Uh, Exchanged with the African countries or the or some Asian countries, how can or with we solve China. this problem? Or China, for example, yes. How can we solve this problem? Because well, we don't want to exchange. Then uh, how can we well, innovate? Mm -hmm. You mean the uh, intellectual property right or something? Yes. Like? yes. Mm -hmm. Not only this, but uh, well, that uh, the newest technologies are always kept secret. And so it will always, well, somehow hmm. signate a little bit. Hmm. By company, that's by a, that's company. a very uh, important thing. Uh, to give some merits to the entrepreneur is required for you know, innovations, I think. So it's not a bad thing to have some thick secret. But the recently, uh, or our system, IPR, uh, intellectual property right, uh, is uh, kept for 15 years. It was 30 years uh, in Japan, uh, in the world, old age. It, it, it was shortened. And it may be shortened, but we need some protection uh, of in intellectual property right. Otherwise, what is the incentive for research? For a better life or uh, better jobs, uh, some money is an incentive, I think. We need it. Probably people need incentive for, and so it's right on the shadow. But if all the new technologies are fully open, Maybe humankind are not so clever, even under that homogeneous condition, still, do you think we are so clever? <laughs> even though it's some kind of religious field. <laughs> But many poor countries cannot afford to to buy these uh, intellectual products. Yeah, yeah. But they need new technologies. How to solve this problem? It's a my uh, it, it it's not my uh, full scope answer. But the I think the uh, I said 30, 40 percent in uh, profit investment is crime of for a human being. But the Recently, socially responsible investment uh, is a, is a uh, topic. I think the, uh, that is some kind of 5% interest rate, profit rate, or 7% interest. The modest interest rate uh, investment can be put into even poor country. Uh, 
that is a possi one of the possibilities, I think. And the other possibility is we have too much money flow uh, internationally for, uh, by bad persons. Yeah. One possibility is uh, add some small tax, taxing, uh, tax to that international money flow. This is now being seriously discussed. I think some, some kinds of taxing for money flow, short-term money flow, should be done right away, I think. Otherwise, the poor country will be exploited, exploited uh, by the rich, rich and bad persons. My vocabulary is poor, and so bad, I say bad persons. You understand uh, my meaning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, my name is Anna Kovalema. Um, thank you for coming and sharing your knowledge with us. So, uh, you were talking about uh, energy efficiency improvement and recycling innovations. And, uh, well, as to the Russian society, I believe that unfortunately we have a really wasteful way of life and we are not used to recycling, reusing. So, uh, my question is that, uh, from your point of view, are there any means of encouraging our people to um, change the existing uh, patterns of consumption to uh, start recycling and saving energy? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. That is uh, uh, related to my lifelong effort, uh, even in Japan. But uh, Tohoku uh, earthquakes, uh, and the con contingent uh, tsunami uh, uh, lost our electricity uh, line, including uh, nuclear power plants at Fukushima. And uh, this summer was in uh, really risk danger for a blackout uh, uh, of in Japan. And this situation, but we could uh, overcome the difficulty this summer already. That is the people's uh, uh, efficient uh, use of energy and uh, some patience. But the biggest one is efficiency improvement. And, and so, uh, my, my ano, answer is, in, in the case of Japan, it was very uh, difficult to improve the uh, energy efficiency in daily life of the people. It is a difficult uh, thing. But the, in Japan, the risk of danger of blackout uh, made it possible, uh, st started to made it, make it possible. And so, uh, you can think how, you know better Russia than me, and so you, th you should think how you penetrate, if you understand my, and you agree my uh, proposal, or you should consider uh, knowing the people of Russia and the society of Russia. And uh, what do you think about the measures of uh, social marketing and maybe social advertising? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in, in the case of one uh, economic means uh, we have taken in Japan is echo point. Uh, we have some best refrigerator, best efficient refrigerator that is standard. And the, uh, we uh, graded uh, the merchandise, uh, second best, third best. And the, depending on the efficiency, we gave echo point. That echo point is a kind of money uh, who can uh, buy another thing. It's not so big, uh, a few percents of the price, but still it can be incentive to the people. And another important point is to read my vision 2050. <laughs> yeah, you can download from Springer homepage free yeah, <laughs> but I should say that social advertising is very important for our university as well, 
during our last meeting with the faculty, I mentioned that we um, had spent 2.5 times more money on electricity oh. than three years ago. Oh. And uh, this is our money. Mm. We could spend it on salaries, uh, on, on uh, treats of our students abroad, and so on and so forth. But if you go right now along our corridors, you'll see a lot of uh, rooms uh, with lamps <laughs> uh, switched on. <laughs> so this is the problem for all of us, for, for the students, for the faculty members. And, uh, you know, we spend a lot of money on energy and uh, we, we need some mental changes. I started, when I was a uh, president of the University of Tokyo, I started uh, Todai. Todai means University of Tokyo. Todai uh, Sustainable Campus Project. Uh, uh, there. Uh, energy efficiency was the one of the most important uh, targets, and it's quite succeeding. Think about such project for yeah, our yeah. university. Yeah, student, student, students, students are important. Students, <laughs> student join. <laughs> okay. So, thank you very, very no. much. Have a good stay it's here good. and safe trip back. Thank you for your coming. Thank, I, I thank you very much. It's, it's very interesting and important for us to thank be you. with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.